Hey, y'all, welcome back to church today. I, I want to thank you for being part of Where You Are Church, a place where we can gather anywhere people are. Anywhere you are today, we can bring church because the church is when God's people gather together to worship his name and study his word and see what the word of God has to say to us and then unpack how to live that out and then help each other do that. That's what the church does. So whether it's it's you watching with us or whether it's a group of you, look, can I be honest? I would recommend that you get a group with you, one or two other people, and then and then you've got kind of a watch party thing going on, and then you're standing together, you're holding each other strong in your faith. So I want to encourage you to do that. But however it's working, we want to bring the presence of God and the Word of God to where you are. Now, we're starting a new Bible, uh, a new a new sermon series this this week, and with that, we're going to have a Bible reading group. So through our Carry Bible app, which if you don't have, look up Carry Bible app in whatever your app store is. Uh, download the Carry Bible app, and and if you will text the word Bible group to the number 94,000, text the word Bible group, no spaces, just all together Bible group, to the number 94,000. We'll give you the link you need to get signed up for this and to be on the reading group we're on in the book of Mark. Because for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking into the book of Mark and what it has to say to us about Jesus' life and about what Jesus says to us about honestly reaching and leading the people around us to a relationship with him. So one more time, uh, the Carry Bible app, I want, you to, I want you to text the word Bible group, no spaces, just Bible group, to the number 94,000 and join us as we read through the gospel of Mark. Now, we're going to look at these stories in the life of Jesus, and we're going to look at them from the standpoint of what we're calling simple gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, let's unpack that word gospel. It means the good news of Jesus. The good news of Jesus is not complicated. The good news of Jesus is not, this is not one of those spiritual journeys that you have to go on an Indiana Jones type of crusade and try to find all the depth of meaning and, and figure out the Holy Grail and go through and survive all of the traps. And this is not like that. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, don't want us to have difficulty finding a relationship with them. The Trinity, our God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, tries to make it simple for us to come to know him. We, we, we don't have to go on some great quest or some great journey in order to figure this out. We simply have to desire a relationship with God. It, it's, it's not difficult, and, and that's what I want us to understand. It's simple. In fact, let, let me just, let, let's get started with this. And, and as we get started, I want to show you a few things as we go through this. We're going to be in Mark today, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. And I want to start reading with verse, with verse 13. Mark, chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading verse 13. It says here that once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. Now, generally, he teaches beside the lake. He'll walk into, we see numerous times where he's teaching beside the lake. He walks down to the shore. A large group of people have gathered. And if you can imagine, if you will, the, the, the waters of the lake are here. And then, and then a hill rises up out of the waters. And it's like a natural amphitheater. I, we, I've been to the Sea of Galilee where, where all of this takes place, where the lake is. And, and, and there there are plenty of places where there's like an amphitheater you're down on the water and then and then a hill rises up that's the kind of setting we're talking about so that when Jesus sits on a boat on the water and speaks his voice is reflected not just from the boat but it's reflected from the water his voice carries up the hill and he can speak to so many more people than if it's just an open flat space now Jesus also taught in open flat spaces but in this case he's beside the lake so he's teaching from there it says a large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. And as he walked along, as he walked along teaching them, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. Now, I, I, I want to pack a couple of things here. I want to unpack, first of all, that Jesus is teaching. Large crowds are following him. Jesus is not in need of another follower. Everybody's got it? I need you to understand, this is not a moment where Jesus is like, man, I need to find somebody else. Man. No, there's a crowd following him already. I, in order for us to understand this, I want you to understand that there's never so many people following God or following Jesus that he's not looking for you. 
He's not looking for one more. I asked a guy one time when I was at a church I was pastoring, so, so how large should the church be? And his answer was not helpful, but it was truthful. His answer was one more. And I went, what? He said, we should always be looking for one more. Okay, that's a truthful answer. Not really a helpful one because I needed a target for us to shoot at. But at the same time, it's a truthful answer. God is always open to reaching new people. Secondly, Levi is sitting at the tax collector's booth. That means that he's not exactly an ideal candidate to follow a Jewish rabbi. He is collecting taxes. Watch. He's collecting taxes for the temple, yes, but he's also collecting taxes for Caesar. So he's collecting taxes for the oppressor that is holding them down. He's not the favorite person in the area. In fact, he's someone that most people in this area, in the Jewish world at the moment, would hate. And Jesus stops at his booth and says to him, follow me. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Jesus makes an offer to Levi. He asks him to do something. What he asked him to do was not complicated. I need you to understand that the offer Jesus is making to you and to everyone else in the world is not complicated. It is a simple offer. And the offer is this, follow me. Jesus says, follow me. Now, now you say, well, why would I follow anybody? Well, okay, can I, can I just get you to understand something? You are following somebody. You, you, if you're not careful, if, you're, if you don't choose who you follow, you're going to by accident follow somebody. You're following somebody's thinking, somebody's teaching, somebody's philosophy, somebody's influence. You are being influenced by, honestly, in this culture, multiple somebodies that are driving you in a given direction. If you're not intentional about that, then you're going to drift through life led by this one and then influenced by that one and then directed by the other one and then and then and then destroyed ultimately because you don't find any purpose or meaning or direction because you keep getting turned around by the next person with what sounds like a good idea. What you've got to do is choose who you're going to follow. And when Jesus says follow me, it's not a complicated thing. It's just follow me. What does that mean? It means that, that, that Levi will now stop doing what is offensive to God and offensive to God's people and will start listening to God's words, listening to Jesus' words, listening to what Jesus teaches, doing, applying what Jesus teaches him. As we read through the Gospel of Mark, we're going to have Jesus teaching us. Therefore, he can teach us how we ought to walk. He can teach us how we ought to think. He can teach us how we ought to act in the world around us. And suddenly we're following him. It's not complicated. Now, now let, me, let, me, let me be honest. No, it's not easy. It's not easy to always follow God, but it's not complicated. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, becoming healthier. Can I be honest? To become healthier, it's real simple. You need to eat less, move more. This is not hard. It's simple. It's very difficult to do. And then you need to eat right, move more. I mean, it, it, it keeps going, but it builds on itself simply, but it's not easy to do. Christianity is the same way. The call is simple. Follow me. In fact, can I be honest? I'll give you a second point, which is right here in the same place. The response, our response to this call is also simple. It's he followed. Levi decided, yes, I'll follow Jesus. Now, it's likely this wasn't his first encounter with Jesus. Most people don't drop their career and drop everything to follow someone the first time they hear them speak or the first time they meet them. It's likely that Levi has heard Jesus on multiple occasions. It's likely that he's been influenced by Jesus' disciples. It's likely that other people have talked to him about it. It's likely he's thought about this for a long period of time. Now Jesus says, follow me, and it's the right moment. And so Levi leaves everything and follows Jesus. In the end, we've got to do that. You don't necessarily, in, in our setting, have to leave your job or your family or the place you live. You don't necessarily have to do that. But you've got to leave behind some things that you know are not what God wants in your life. And as you read the Word of God, you'll begin to see more and more and more areas that need to be adjusted in your life. But look, God is a good God. He, he, the Bible says, Jesus says, take my yoke on you because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's not going to give us more than we can handle at one time. And so God's word is going to begin to show us ways that we can change. And what are we doing? It's simple. We're following. We're reading. We're listening. We're learning. 
we're changing. But God is doing that in our lives over time, not in one fell swoop. This is not one moment. I think some Christians have this idea that they're going to they're gonna kneel down somewhere at some altar somewhere, and they're going to they're gonna pray some prayer, and boom, God's just going to change them. It's going to be miraculous. It's going to be on the spot, and boom, they went in this way. They came out totally different. Okay, you know, God's capable of that. But that's not normally how he does that. He normally does this by allowing us to be changed little by little as we read his word and hear his word. He calls us, and his call is simple, follow. And then we have to respond, and our respond is simple. We choose to listen. We choose to follow. We choose to allow his word to change us. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is how people's lives are made better. I, I, I know, I know. Everybody, everybody's like, oh, you're oversimplifying life and life is not like, you know what? I, I, I hear you, but I am telling you that it's just true that Jesus is the answer. Now, what's the question? Jesus is always the answer. One way or another, the Bible is going to give you an answer to virtually any question you have that you can ask. And, and you know, we test this from time to time because some of you send in questions and then we'll have an ask the pastor moment. And, and we'll just, we'll, the answer is there. You have to look into the word of God. And, and the truth is God's word, God's directive, God, God, the overall overarching teaching of scripture will give you the answers you need. I understand that you don't want to believe that it's that simple, but it just is. When you receive Jesus and choose to follow him, it will change your life for the better. It will bring you freedom. It will bring you joy. It will bring you peace. It will bring you health. It will bring all of that, not from some miraculous there are rainbows, unicorns, lightning bolts. No, it's because God knows how you're made and God knows how you should live. And when you live the way you were made to live, instead of living opposite the way you were made to live, you live a better life and you're healthier, you're happier, you have more joy, you have more fulfillment. All of that happens because you follow the God who made us and who came to save us. And the truth is, it's just, it's just simple. It's just logical. If I try to, yo, know, stay with me now. Stay with me. If I take my car that's created to drive on a road and I try to use it in a field to plow a field, it's not going to work. It's not going to work well at all. But if I, and it, but by the by the same token, if I take a tractor that's made to pull a plow through the field and I try to drive it on the interstate, that's not going to work. Neither one's a good idea. That's, that's what the world is having you do. They're having you take your life that you're living, that God made you for, and use it in a way God didn't design it to be used. Where if you'll just follow Jesus, you'll begin to understand that Jesus created us a certain way. And he designed us to be in community. He designed us to be in community with him and with each other. He designed us for his word. He designed us for a relationship with him where we get to know him through his word. We get to know him through prayer. We get to know him through following. We begin to become more and more like him. God designed it this way. And that's why our lives get better when we begin to follow Christ. But you see, the story doesn't end there. I could let the story in there, but it doesn't. I want, I want to show you something. If you keep reading, starting verse 14, you get this. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples. I want to just pause. There is this, this, this nonchalant, while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house. It, it was not. This doesn't give some idea of some designed, uh, you know, organized, we, 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 we held a party, we sent out RSVP invitations, everybody put on tuxedos, we all got together, and Jesus, no, this is a, this is a, hey, it's dinner time, where are we having dinner, let's go to Levi's. Or, or, hey, it's dinner time. Levi says, hey, come over to my house. I got, st I got some friends coming over. Anyway, y'all come on. But in the midst, stay with me, in the middle of what was normal, Levi introduces Jesus to a group of people who otherwise would not have met him. In other words, G Jesus is brought right where Levi's friends are. 
He doesn't try to bring, Levi doesn't try to bring his friends to some synagogue or temple or some big event somewhere. He just says, hey guys, we're having dinner at my house again. That's normal to all of them. They all come to his house for dinner. He introduces Jesus into the normal of his world. In other words, he takes the gospel and he puts it where you are. He takes the church and he puts it where you are. I got to be honest. This is missing in our current culture. Uh, the idea that I should share my faith or I should bring Jesus into my, my, my casual world, my leisure world, my weekend world, my work world, the idea that I would bring Jesus into that is, has become foreign to us. And it's, there, there's a lot of reasons why it's become foreign to you. I, I really want to take you through this, but, but I, 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 I don't have time. So uh, one of our pastors, Pastor Curtis Honeycutt, and I wrote this book called The E-Word, where we unpack, the whole first half of the book is us unpacking why it's uncomfortable for us to bring the gospel into our real world. And then the last half of the book is on how we might can bring the gospel, how we might could introduce Jesus into our normal everyday word. I want to offer you this. I, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I, I want to give you this for free, okay? I want you to have this because I want you to be able to think this way. I want you to be able to think like Levi, who, 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 when he met Jesus and realized what Jesus could do for him, he invited everyone to follow with him. That's what I want you to do. I want you to invite everybody else to follow with you. You say, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'm uncomfortable with that. Okay, let's answer two questions. Why are you uncomfortable with that? Question one. And how can you overcome that? Question two. Both of those questions, that's what this book is all about. So here's the deal. If you will text the word E-word, the letter E and the word word, E word, to 94,000, it will take you to a platform where you can, we'll give you a free download of this book. I'm going to give you this book, but I want you, I want you to take a look at it. I want you to really unpack. This is why I'm uncomfortable with, it, with this, and this is how God can change it. This is how I can start acting more like Levi and less like the world around me, because the world around me acts like if I talk about Jesus at all, somehow I've done something wrong. But, but the truth is, Jesus is the answer for the world around me. I don't know how to get this across to you. I, 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 if, I, if I could scream it, if I could shout it, if I could, if I could just climb through and just be in the room with you, I would just implore you to understand that the answer the world needs is the Jesus we already know. But we got to bring him to them. We've got to choose to follow him. Many of us have done that. We've got to choose to respond to his call to follow. But once we do, we've got to invite other people to do the same thing. I'm going to be honest. For the next five weeks, here's what I want us to pray for. I want all of us to pray that God would put names and faces in our minds of people that he would have us to bring to a relation, bring Jesus to them right where they are. Bring the church, bring the word, bring Jesus, what, bring it right where they are and introduce them to the Jesus we know. And I want us to pray, that I want, I want you to pray that God puts people in my mind. I'm going to pray he puts them in your mind. I want you to pray that God puts them in every person that hears this. God puts a person in their mind and that God prepares that person for the gospel that is going to be brought to them. Because in the end, it's his words, it's his presence, and it's his forgiveness that matters. We are introducing them to Jesus, not a church, not a building, not a place, not a pastor, Jesus. Now, there's a church that will help them follow, and it can be right where you are. There's a pastor that will teach, and there, you know what, there's so many of those out there. I'm just one. There, there, there's a group that will walk with. That's where you are. That's where you come in. But in the end, it's the relationship with Jesus that sets me free and that will set everybody else around me free if I'll just let them know about it. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how else to say it. I'm begging you. Receive Jesus. Say yes to his call. Follow him. And then invite everybody you know to do that with you. Can I pray for you? Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would 
just begin to put in everybody's minds the names and the faces of people who need to hear your gospel, who need to meet you and know you. Lord, I pray that you would take each one of us and you, Lord, would would allow us to be willing to follow you. Lord, I pray that you would encourage every one of us, everyone listening, to, to go to the Carry Bible app and start reading through the Gospel of Mark. Let's all do this together. Lord, help us to do this. And as we do, would you speak to us all? And collectively, Lord, could you help us reach people that will never darken the doors of the church, people who have left the gospel, help us to reintroduce some people to the Jesus that they know they need and they don't realize they're missing. Father God, make us your messengers. Make us like Levi. And we'll give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, I, I, I do want you to, I do want you to text E word to 94,000 and get the book, uh, the free download. I, I also want to encourage you to help us as we're trying to reach more and more and more people partner with us. Look, look, if this is your church, this is where you should be tithing. Tithing is giving the first 10% of, of everything God's given to you. If we're your home church, this should be a place you should tithe. And by the way, the tithe is not payment for service that's rendered. It's part of our worship. It's part of how we worship God. Maybe you tithe somewhere else, but you'd be willing to partner with us. We have a, we have a program we call 53 for 53. It's, it's we're asking people to give $53 on some regular, regularly scheduled basis in order to help us reach 53% of the population that will never darken the doors of a church. So if you'd partner with us or if you'd tithe or if you want to make a one-time gift, I want to encourage you to text YAC Gives, W Y A C Gives, to the number 94,000, and you'll find a platform there that'll let you set all that up. So for the book, you text 94,000, the word E word, and to be a giver or a partner or a tither, you're going to text YAC Gives to 94,000. Hey, I'll see you next week.